Nutrition in Plants Introduction A living organism shows seven basic characteristics that differentiate it from a non-living one. These characteristics are called life characteristics because together they ensure that an organism continues to live. Though all living organisms show these characteristics, there are clear differences in the manner plants and animals carry them out. In this chapter, we will learn about nutrition, more specifically, nutrition in plants. Nutrition The term food refers to any substance that can be broken down by chemical processes by the body of an organism to give energy. Food also includes liquids, example, juices, soups. Nutrition refers to the entire process of taking in food and drink by living organisms and using it for the purpose of growth and daily activities. Types of Nutrition Autotrophic nutrition is shown by plants and involves a process by which living organisms make their own food, photosynthesis. Heterotrophic nutrition is shown by animals and some plants as we shall learn later where organisms take in ready-made food. Ready-made food may come from plants, fruits, vegetables, etc. or from animals, milk, meat, etc. Experiment To show that only green plants can photosynthesize. Place a beaker about three-fourths full of water on a stand and boil the water. Place the leaf in this water for about two minutes. This will break down the cell walls. Take the leaf out and put it in a test tube with three-fourths alcohol. Place this test tube in very hot water for about 10 minutes. As alcohol warms up, it will remove chlorophyll from the leaf and make it almost colorless. After about 10 minutes, remove the leaf and dip it in warm water briefly to soften the leaf. Now, place the leaf on a white tile and add 3 to 4 drops of iodine solution. You will observe that only the green portion of the leaf turns bluish black while the white portion does not. This shows that starch is present only in the green area of the leaf. Thus, only green leaves can photosynthesize and make food. Cell You have seen that buildings are made of bricks. Similarly, the bodies of living organisms are made of tiny units called cells. Cells can be seen only under the microscope. Some organisms are made of only one cell. The cell is enclosed by a thin underboundary called the cell membrane. Most cells have a distinct, centrally located spherical structure called the nucleus. The nucleus is surrounded by a jelly-like substance called cytoplasm. Photosynthesis During photosynthesis, chlorophyll-containing cells of leaves in the presence of sunlight use carbon dioxide and water to synthesize carbohydrates. This process can be represented as an equation. During the process, oxygen is released. The carbohydrates ultimately get converted into starch. The presence of starch in leaves indicates the occurrence of photosynthesis. This starch is also a carbohydrate. Inside a chloroplast Thylakoid Inside each chloroplast, there are stacks of discs, each disc called a thylakoid. They contain chlorophyll and help to trap sunlight. Grana The stacks of thylakoids are called grana. The light reaction takes place here. Stroma the grana are arranged in a fluid matrix called stroma. The dark reactions take place here. Heterotrophic nutrition The classification of heterotrophic plants are shown. Plants called non-green plants are unable to manufacture their own food. Then, there are some plants which can manufacture their own food, but the soil in which they grow do not have all the nutrients. So how do these plants obtain their food or the other nutrients they need? Such plants depend on green plants or on other living bodies. This mode of nutrition is called 
heterotrophic nutrition and such plants are called heterotrophs. Greek, heteron, is an, other and troph, nutrition. Thus, heterotrophs are organisms that cannot manufacture their own food and have to depend on other plants or animals to obtain energy. Parasitic plants Parasitic plants absorb food from another growing green plant called the host. Only the parasitic plant benefits from this relationship. Usually, parasitic plants develop special roots called hostoria which penetrate into the tissues of the host plant. The prepared food is generally absorbed from the root or the stem of the host plant. Coscuta, dodder, mistletoe and apodanthus are common examples of parasitic plants. Parasitic plants do cause harm to the host plant. Dodder and mistletoe are serious problems for plants. Dodder can cover woody plants and cause heavy damage to certain economically important crop plants. Mistletoe can become so abundant on a tree that most of the foliage is of the parasite and not of the host. Scientists believe that parasitic plants rarely, perhaps never, kill the host plant so that the parasite can continue to live off the host. Saprophytic plants Saprophytic plants are usually whitish but can have brightly colored flowers. These plants have no green leaves. Often, they even have no leaves at all. Saprophytic plants live off rotting material. Greek, sapros means rotting and phyton means plant. They grow in places with lots of rotting dead leaves, often in deep shade in tropical forests. Some examples are Indian pipe, and coral root. Indian pipe is found commonly in Asia and throughout North America. Coral roots are found in forest environments around the world. Carnivorous plants Carnivorous plants are plants that derive some or most of its nutrients by trapping and consuming animals, mainly insects. Therefore, such plants are also called insectivorous plants. Some of the common ones are the pitcher plants, dorsera, sundew, bladderwort and the venus flytrap. In the pitcher plant, the leaf is modified to form a tubular pitcher-like structure. The inside of the pitcher is lined with downward pointing hair. These hair do not allow any insect to climb back up and escape. The fluid at the bottom of the pitcher contains digestive juices which consume the insect. The California pitcher plant is also called the cobra lily as it resembles a rearing cobra. It has a forked leaf that resembles the forked tongue of a snake. Carnivorous plants The leaves of sundew have tentacles with drops of a sticky substance called mucilage at the ends. Insects get stuck in this substance and become entangled. The mucilage then digests the helpless insect. The trap of the Venus flytrap is a highly modified leaf. On the inner surface, reddish hair to attract insects. There are short, stiff hair called trigger or sensitive hair. When anything touches these hair enough to bend them, the two lobes of the leaves snap shut in less than a second. Symbiotic plants there are certain plants which live with other plant types and share their food resources. Both the types mutually gain from each other. Such relations are said to be symbiotic. Lichens are an association between a fungus and a green algae. The fungus obtains nutrients from the algae and the fungal tissue in turn provides shelter for the algae, allowing it to grow in harsh conditions such as rock surfaces where it would otherwise be destroyed. Certain plants, such as peas, have a symbiotic association with bacteria, such as rhizobium. It converts atmospheric nitrogen into plant-usable forms, example ammonia. The plant, in turn, provides nutrients for the bacterium growth. 